Today we're going to talk about flirt pull training for pet dogs. We are about to have a ton of fun right now. Let's talk about structure and rules and go ahead and get that out of the way so we can get to the fun stuff, okay? So first of all, the flirt pole is not a tug toy, not a chew toy. It has a rule structure and we need to teach the dog that to keep the game going, they've got to play by the rules. In order to get what we want from the dog, we need to know what the dog really gets out of this game. Each dog might have its different part of the game that it enjoys. There's the stock, where they anticipate where the toy is gonna move and how they're gonna get to it. And those dogs are more thoughtful and strategic and like the movement and the controlling of the movement a little bit more, perhaps. There's the chase. And that's where your dog is actively running towards the teaser as fast as they can. And those dogs are likely your really active, really energetic dogs. And they love to run after the toy. And then there's the catch, the actual grabbing of the toy, which is super fun for most dogs. And then there's the possession. And those are your dogs that never want to drop the teaser because they want to have a minute to enjoy all that work they did. Uh, to catch it. So it's important that we know which parts of this hunt sequence that they enjoy so that we may know that information about them and use it to make the game more fun and enjoyable and nourishing so that they want to opt in to play the game over and over again. You might see some signs that your dog is actually not enjoying the game, at least not the way you're playing it, and those signs might be where your dog tries to steal the pole, run off with it, and they don't want to start again. So if you notice that your dog really doesn't want to relinquish the teaser, I want you to think about if you are allowing them the opportunity to really enjoy the part of the game that they like the most. So Poppy here is actually enjoying the possession part of the game quite a bit. So when I have a dog, uh, that doesn't want me to take the teaser back to start the game again and they want to play tug with it or they want to step on it and not allow me to have it. Um, and you might even notice that dogs like this, Poppy, oh good girl, good. You might notice that dogs like this, is, if you get them to drop it for food, they go right back to it so you can't get it. They want to grab it before you start the game again. Uh, so what I do is I don't start the game again. And this is actually, this can be kind of fun, so I'm going to show you, okay? All right, now if I were to pick it up and snatch it right now, she might jump up for it and grab, see? This, this gets you the grabby dog, the frustrated dog, and that is not a very nourishing way to play the game, especially for pet dogs, because remember, for pet dogs, we are not trying to build drive, we're trying to channel and harness extra energy um, and add structure to a really fun game um, so that we can reinforce good pet dog behaviors, right? Okay, yeah. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna let her have it and I'm gonna stand on this and I'm gonna use really good food here because odds are if your dog really loves this flirt pole, they want good stuff. Um, they're not gonna relinquish the teaser for mediocre treats. Um, and what I'm gonna do is when she catches it and picks it up, I'm gonna say, a marker word, yes, 
and toss the treat. Get it. And then I'm going to tell her to get it. Get it. Yes. And even if she doesn't put it in her mouth, just her going up to it. Get it. Yes. Get it. Get it. Yes. <laughs> now she's just staring at it. Um, but what that does is it kind of takes the fun out of it for the dog as far as the whole, I'm going to keep this away from you and put my paw over it. See how her paw is over top of it? She doesn't want me to start the game again because she wants to hold on to it. Okay? So we are going to play around with this part of the game. I'm going to see if I can get her to pick it up um, with her mouth on cue. Get it. Get it. Yes. And also, if you have a dog that tends to grab the rope part of the toy quite a bit, this is a great game for that dog too. Yes, because we're putting the focus on the teaser instead of grabbing the rope or the stick, which happens quite a bit. Yeah. Get it. Yes. So once the dog's really good at this, that's when I add in their out cue. Yes, which we've kind of started with Poppy already, but not a whole bunch. So you might get to see some uh, progression here. Okay, so get it. Out. Yes. And so when I say out, all I want is her mouth to open, and I say yes, and then yes brings her the rest of the way off the toy. Uh, the other thing I want to do here is teach her to only get it when she hears get it, okay? Oh, we're getting stocky. Sit. So by putting get it on stimulus control, meaning she only gets it. Oh, I don't want her jumping like that. Sit. Mostly because I don't want her to hurt herself, uh, but also because we want manners to come along with this training. When I say get it, oh, I did say it. You could have grabbed it right there and been okay. Um, but when I say that, that's the only time she's supposed to actually get up and grab it. So we're going to play around with that a little bit right now. This is where we're playing with a different part of the game, the stock slash anticipation suspense part of the game, which can be really hard for dogs who don't have a lot of impulse control. So we're going to take a look and see what we got. So I'm going to lower it down. If she were to get up and grab, all I'm going to do is quickly pick it back up and hold it close to me and within, you know, just close and tight and make it uninteresting and be a tree is basically what I'm doing so that she knows that that's not what I want. Okay, so I'm going to lower it to where I think she'll be successful, which is now. Get it. Good girl. Get it. Yes, good catch. And then I'm just saying yes when she catches it. Yes, because I don't think her out cue is strong enough yet. And then I'm going to toss a treat away while I pick up for, th for that reason. OK, so this is, not, this is not what we're doing here. Remember, this is a game of structure and a game that helps us reinforce good behavior. So when my dog starts jumping up for this teaser, I simply time out for a little bit. I do not go ah, ah. I do not scream and yell because that just kind of makes it more fun, to be honest with you. All I do is become very boring, and the game stops for a while. And that's really enough punishment for most dogs, OK? Not to be all Mickey Mouse here. Ready? Sit. Good. Good girl. OK. So and this is why I don't do a ton of chase with this specific dog. She's not ready for it yet. It builds too much arousal, and she's not thinking enough about the structure and, and the rules of the game. So teaching the rules is where they burn a lot of mental energy, which is just as tiring as burning that f physical energy, OK? Good. Good. I'm telling her good, which is a duration cue. I'm helping her a little. Get it. Good girl. You got it. Get it. Out. 
Yes. Good girl. Good. Now I was kind of reaching in my bait bag as I set out, so I was kind of cheating a little bit there. So let me try it without doing that. Get it. Get it. Oh. Out. Yes. Good girl. Good. Okay, that's better mechanics on my part. Okay. But, oh, did you get it? Up. Yes. Good girl. Good. Now I'm going to toss some food that way so that I can pick this up without getting jumped on. All right. So remember that. Toss some food away while you pick it up so you don't get the dog that snatches and grabs and gets frustrated like what you just saw. Okay. So when she comes back, I'm in a better position to ask her to sit. You ready? Are you done? Looking for food? See, this gave me a lot more time to regroup. Sit. Good. And get better behavior. Stay. So I'm asking her to stay, but I'm also giving her body language. I've got the teaser here. And not that this, is, this kind of looks like a weapon. I'm not meaning to scare her. If you have a dog that gets scared by the pole, please don't shove the pole at them. But this gives her very clear body language that she's not to grab it right away. Good. Ooh. So she got up, and I just tuck everything in. Good. Stay. Good. Get it. Not a girl. Get it. Sit. Yes. Very nice. So if your dog's not able to eat while you play this game, because sometimes it's really hard for dogs to go from arousal back to food, um, then I think it's time to slow your game down and, and make your dog more thoughtful about it. So think about that, because sometimes when this comes out, even a hot dog or a piece of chicken is not going to be enough. So that means that your game might be nourishing the wrong parts of the brain right here. What do you think? Which part of your brain am I nourishing? So, and you'll know by your dog's ability to, to keep their cool, to keep their calm. Good. Get it. Yes, good girl. Good job. Yes. It should not feel like a battle of, you know, strength. It shouldn't feel like a challenge. It shouldn't, um, it, and it definitely shouldn't be an unsafe thing to do. Right. Too much repetitive motion in any type of sport can be a little dangerous, and you have to be very careful um, and know your dog and know what their limits are. Um, but too much jumping for the toy can be dangerous too. So for pet dogs, I definitely recommend that you keep the toy on the ground as much as you can until they have a lot of impulse control. Um, you don't want them lunging and jumping up for it um, because they can end up injuring. This was my brief tutorial on the flirt pole. In the comments below, don't forget to tell me about your dogs. Um, what part of this game do you think that they would like the most? I want to hear about it. Um, and I can also give you a couple of tips on the best way to set this game up for your dog at home.